I had spoken earlier on the Mool Mantra, which is the essence of the message of Nanak, the circumstances leading to the birth of Japji Sahib and the message of Nanak. Now I'll continue with the explanation of these words. The essence of the message of Nanak is contained in three words Ek, Onkar, Satna. What is this word Ek, Onkar is? Ek means one. Onkar means the existential sound. Onkar is the only existential sound. It was in the beginning. It is beginning of the creation. It will be in the dissolution of creation. Also it is nowhere. You will feel it deep within as the noise of the mind dissolves. The clatter is no more. What Nana called it as the sound, the unheard sound, the unheard sound that is existential is what Hindus have called Om, Christians have named it as God. In the beginning there was word and the word was with God. Nanak says that witches cannot be given any name. All names are given by man. Omkar is the only name that is not given by anyone. Ram, Krishna, Allah, God are the names given by men of different sex. The only name that is not created is Omkar. And why this name Omkar? Man is a constant chatterbox. Thoughts keep on floating on the inner sky. Constantly waves keep on appearing on the surface. Waves of emotions, waves of thoughts. When thoughts are no more, waves have subsided and merge in the ocean and you drown into your innerness. Only then you can hear a mystical sound. This sound is uncreated, no one has created it. This is the sound of the existence. This is the echo of the existence. Omkar is the way of existence. This name is not assigned by anyone. Om is not a word. This is the sound. Not only an ordinary sound, it is a unique as well. Without any source, uncreated, it remains hidden in the existence itself. Our all sounds are created by friction. A musician vibrates the strings of the instrument and thus creates a sound. This sound is created because of the friction between the string and the finger. The river flows. The sound arises through the flow. This is the sound created when water strikes the shore. You sit by the waterfall. There is a sound. Water falls on the rock. A sound is created. This is the sound of the waterfall. Breeze blows and rustling it passes through the leaves. Rustling is the sound created between the breeze and the tree leaves. We speak, singer sings. All such sounds are created because of duality, the two. The singer and the sound. The speaker and the speech. When all duality vanishes, a sound continues to echo. This is the sound of home. 
Remember Om is not a word. Each language, be it Hindi, Sanskrit or Gurmukhi, has a special letter to represent this sound. And this word Om does not form the part of any language. Science says electricity is at the root of the entire existence. Science revolves around the trinity of electron, proton and neutron. Accordingly, if you go on dividing the entire existence to reach the solitary unit, then we obtain electricity or electrical energy. The ultimate source of science is electron. Science says entire existence is composed of electricity. For the scientist, even the sound is composed of electrical energy. And the root of everything is electrical energy. This is objective. Science is outward journey. The search of the mystic is subjective. Mystics have reached the very core of the existence by uniting the discordant elements that constitute the creation. By uniting the entire existence, by uniting the entire sense organs, mind attains to oneness. Otherwise, the function of each sense organ is separate from the other. The eyes see, the nose smell, the ears hear, the skin touches. All these are the diverse functions. There has to be a faculty that coordinates the functions of various sense organs. By uniting the entire sense organ, mind attains to oneness. If mind continues to say that the sound, the voice that you are hearing is of this person and the other part of the mind says, no, this is not the sound of that person. You are hearing the sound and if you happen to see the image of the person also that is speaking, then there are two different stimuli that is reaching the mind. One is the sound, the other is image. Mind coordinates the two activities, brings the oneness in that state of duality if it is used for that purpose. By uniting the entire sense organs and their perception, mind attains to oneness. By uniting various individual minds, one attains to cosmic mind. The process goes on. By uniting all the sense organs of your mind, uh, your, your sense organs and their perception mind, attains to oneness. When the pe different people with different sense perception that have attained to oneness come together, there is a unitary voice, one voice. That is the cosmic mind. The difference is very insignificant and yet still it is not. To science, existence is composed of the electrical energy and for the mystics, the entire existence is composed of sound energy. Science reached to this conclusion through an objective analysis and mystics reached to this conclusion through a subjective analysis. Mystic reached to this conclusion by uniting the stimuli or the sense perception and science reached to this conclusion by dividing everything into its components. To science, sound is a form of electricity. 
and to the mystic electrical energy is another form of sound energy. The difference is not so big. It is like two different persons with different levels of understanding and frame of mind are looking at the glass half full. One sees it as half full and the other sees it as half empty. The object is same, one object. However, people with different frames of understanding are looking at the situation. The outcome is two different conclusions. Suppose there is a full moon night. You are standing on the seashore. The reflection of the moon is in the water. A person sees it and poetry is born in him. Another person sees and music is born in him. The event is the same but the two different people with different frames of mind. One is of a poetic mind, the other is of the musical mind. And if there is someone else who may find that the moon looking on the surface of the ocean shaking vigorously may find that a gel-like substance on a big platter and a nice dish to savor. The search of the science differs from that of the mystic. The way of science is that of dissection and that of the mystic is unification. Mystic or religion moved from many to one. When all discordant elements are united, oneness happens. In that oneness, meditation attains fruition as samadhi and something echoes as the pulse of the cosmos. In that oneness meditation attains fruition as samadhi and something echoes as the pulse of the cosmos. This echo is discovered both within and without. He finds this echo like the dissolving notes of an enchanting melody. Everything seems to be dissolving in that sound. Something like this has never happened before. Bemused, dazed, he finds no one creating this sound, yet still it is there. Something like this has never happened before. Bemused, dazed, he finds no one creating this sound, yet still it is there. He knows not the source, suddenly something dawns. A realization happens, awareness comes, he understands this sound is not created by any friction, not a created sound, it is uncreated. This is unheard not, unheard, the unheard sound, the uncreated sound. Nanak says this is Omkar. This is the only authentic name of that which is Nanaka calls this noun. Again and again Nanak uses this word noun. Remember whenever Nanak uses the word noun, he refers to God or Creator or Rab as he calls and says that alone is truth, that alone is existential. He says one who drowns in this remembrance of the word will certainly attain. Nanak is referring to this existential sound as Ek Pankar. This alone is Satna. Each time Nanak uses this word, he refers to Omkar. All other names cannot take you far and even if any of these names takes you anywhere along the journey. It is because each name finds its resonance with you. Because each name finds its resonance with own God. Try to understand this. When you chant Ram, 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 a stage comes when 
in the process when the word disappears and the sound remains. The sound of the letter M in Ram resonates with M sound in Omkar. Thus chanting Ram, the sound dissolves into the existential sound of Omkar. As you attain to silence, meditativeness happens, Ram transforms into Omkar. Such is the experience of all the mystics. One may begin with any name, ultimately everything dissolves into Omkar. One may begin with any name, ultimately everything dissolves into Omkar. As silence descends, Omkar is. Omkar is always only you need to attain to silence. Sings Ek Omkar Satna. The word Omkar has three sounds A, U, and M. The sound A represents the last syllable of Brahma, that is A. This sound energy creates and evolves. The second sound energy U resembles the last syllable in the word Vishnu. This is the energy that preserves and sustains. And lastly, the sound of the syllable M resonates with the sound M in Maheshwar. In this sound, the other two sounds dissolve to attain to Samadhi or Oneness. Just as electron, proton and neutron explain the three functions that existence has to perform. So too, according to science, electron, proton and neutron is the way the existence is, the way the creation is. And this sound Omkar explains the function how existence maintains itself. Something has to be created first, then it begins to evolve, then it has to be preserved, and then this has to attain to dissolution. The sound of the other two sounds dissolve to attain samadhi or oneness. Even a life long is not enough to understand the essence of the existential sound. And even one moment is enough for this experience. Only the grace of the Master is needed, says an ecstatic man. You remember when the bombs were dropped at the cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan? How long did it take? A few fractions of a second. Only a few fractions of a second it took to drop the bomb and the destruction happened instantaneously. It was not a time gap. Just as it happens in case of a pregnancy, a child is conceived and after a long span of nine months, the child is delivered. But in case of the transformation, in case of destruct, destruction is another form of transformation. Everything is dissolved into its components. And the effect of this nuclear explosion continues even after so many years. 1945, it was dropped on the two cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And still the effect, the generations after that are continuing to face the radiation effect. So too, if there is the grace of the Master, it can happen instantaneously. I will take another sutra to explain further the sound Omkar. This is the Tibetan Sutra. The only country in the world which has devoted all its genius to inner exploration. Its findings are of a tremendous value. Om Mani Padme Hum is one of the most beautiful expressions for the ultimate experience. This is the Tibetan mantra. Om Mani Padme Hum. Its meaning is the sound of silence. Manipad Mehum implies the sound of silence. Beautiful expressions 
for the ultimate experience. Its meaning is the sound of the silence, the diamond in the lotus. Silence has its sound and music. The outer ears cannot hear it. So too outer eyes cannot see it. We have six outer senses and in the past man knew only five outer senses. The sixth sense is new discovery. It is inside your ears. As a result, people fail to recognize it. It is indeed the sense of balance. When you feel giddy and when you see a drunkard walking, it is the sense of balance that is affected. Just as these six senses are used to experience the outer, exactly the same six senses exist within to experience the inner, to see it, to hear it, to feel it, to feel its utter balance and beauty. It is invisible to the outer eye, but not to the inner. You cannot touch it. You cannot touch it with your outer senses, but inner senses are absolutely immersed in it. Om is the sound when everything else disappears from your being. No thoughts, no dreams, no projections, no expectations, not even a single ripple. Your whole lake of consciousness is simply there, silent too. It has become just a mirror. In those rare moments you hear the sound of silence. It is the most valuable experience because not only it shows the quality of the inner music, instead it shows that inner being is harmony, joy and blissfulness. This is implied in the silent sound, silent music of Om Nanak says. You are not to say it. It is erroneous that people start chanting Om. If you say it, you will miss the real thing. You have to hear it. You have to be utterly calm and quiet. And then suddenly it is around you like a subtle dance or like a subtle melody. And the moment that you are able to hear it, you have entered into the very sick secrets of the existence and the moment you are able to hear it you have entered into the very secrets of existence you have become so subtle that now you deserve all the mysteries to be revealed to you existence waits till you are ready matters not how long it has to wait in the East, all the religions without exception agree on this point that the sound which is heard in the final, it is the highest peak of silence, something similar to Om or what Nanak calls as Omka. Omka. The word Om is not written alphabetically in any language, any language of the East because it is not part of the language. It is written as a symbol and the same symbol is used in Sanskrit, Pali, Prakrit, Tibetan, Hindi or Gurmukhi with slight variations in its writing style. All the mystics of all the ages have reached to the same experience that it is not part of our mundane world. Hence, it should not be written in letters. It should have its own symbol which is beyond language. It does not mean anything as far as mind is concerned, but it means tremendously much as far as your spiritual growth is concerned. It is not part of your language or grammar or mind. It is concerned with your being your inner sanctum and your spirituality. All music, particularly the classical music, has been trying to 
catch the sound of silence so that even people who have not entered into their beings can experience something similar but similar can never be the same it is a very far away echo even the greatest musician has to use sound but however beautifully he arranges them he cannot be absolutely silent so he gives gaps of silence in between the whole play of music is between sound and silence and in the same way the whole play of the mystic is creating the gaps of silence between two worlds and it is like the peak and the valleys sound is the peak of energy and valley is the silence that takes you to the other shore the whole play of the music is between sound and silence those who do not understand hear the sounds and those who understand hear the silence the gaps between the sounds the real music is in the words many people are interested in the words when i speak there is a word which comes like the sound which comes like the then all of a sudden there is silence and then this silence lingers on lingers around you creates a parallel pole in you it gives you the taste of your being taste of your own silence this is the state of meditation that you are teen that the master creates through the scheme of the words and the gaps through peaks and valleys through sound and silence the silent is not created by musician he creates a word and all of a sudden silent descends he drowns in, in that gap and along with him he takes you also into that gap the musician is creating the sound and leaving the gaps as the contrast the mystic is creating this sound as words because words is sound word is energy and then suddenly he becomes silent for a moment it's a contrast and it is there so that you can experience something of what has happened to mystic so that you can experience something of what happens to the mystic in his inner world his inner world is that of silence is that of meditativeness is that of bliss to give you the taste he creates this sound and leaves the gap as the contrast the gap between the two words bridges the consciousness of the listener and that of the mystic om is one of the greatest achievements of the seekers of truth there have been cases which are absolutely unbelievable however these are historical when mapa atibati and mystic died his closest disciples were sitting all around him because the death of a mystic is as tremendously valuable as his life and perhaps even more if you can be close to the mystic when consciousness is leaving the physical body you can experience many things because his whole consciousness is leaving the body and if you are alert and conscious you can feel a new fragrance you can see a new light you can hear a new music however we do not understand the mysteries of the dissolution of consciousness into existence we call this as death 
when consciousness is dissolving into the existence we call this death something is disappearing and if consciousness is attaining a new realm we lament over this this is erroneous and lament when consciousness is leaving the body this is erroneous when mapa died he was living in a temple and all his disciples became suddenly surprised they looked all around to find from where the sound of om coming then finally they realized that it was not coming from anywhere instead it was coming from mapa they heard it by putting his ears to his feet to his hands and they could not believe it inside his whole body there was a vibration creating the sound of om he had been hearing this sound for his whole life since he became enlightened because of this constant inner experience of this sound the sound has entered even into his physical cells every fiber of his body has learned a certain synchronicity the same wavelength and the same is now being heard by all gathered around i had the experience to witness such occasions several times when masters were entering back into existence it is indeed benediction but it has been experienced with other mystics also the inner stars radiating particularly at the moment of death when everything comes to a crescendo the inner stars radiating particularly at the moment of death when everything comes to a crescendo but man is so blind and so utterly unintelligent knowing that a mystic experience the music of the silence within them and they call it om however people start repeating om as a mantra thinking that by repeating this they will be able to hear the pulse of the existence by repeating it you will never be able to hear it your mind is functioning when you are repeating it but perhaps i am probably one of the few to tell you this and for centuries people have been teaching repeat om and the kogma this creates a false experience and you can be lost in the false and will never discover the real i emphasize repeating will not help you at all simply be silent and try to listen to it as your mind becomes calm and quiet suddenly you will become aware like a whisper the sound of om is arising within your being when it arises on its own it has a totally different quality it transforms you even modern physics says that everything in the world is composed of electrical energy according to modern physics even sound is nothing but electrical wave the physicists have been working from the outside the mystic says just the opposite but i see no contradiction they say the whole existence is made out of the soundless sound oh and even electricity or the fire is nothing but a certain condensed form of that sound in the east it has been known for centuries there have been musicians who could create by their music a flame on an unlit candle as the music falls over the unlit candle suddenly the flame arises it was a test in the ancient days that unless a musician could create light fire or flame with his music he was still a mature he cannot be recognized as a master as yet the explanations of the physicist and the mystics looks different but perhaps there is 
some deeper souls which can withdraw the contradictions and oppositions perhaps it is only a different interpretation because the mystic is coming from the inside and the physicist is looking at outside what the physicist feels as the electricity the mystics feel feels and knows as the pulse of the cosmos or the sound of the existence they are both saying the same thing in different language and if there is a choice i will choose the mystic because it is because he is experiencing it in his very center his experience is not just an experiment on objects his experience is the ex is an experiment on his own consciousness and consciousness is the very essence of the existence this mantra has many secrets in it the first wordless word is om and the last word is om that is tibetan mantra om mani padme hum it begins with om and ends it as hum om is the flowering and hum is the seed the sufis do not use the whole name allah they use allah hu and slowly and slowly they change allah hu into hu they have found that the sound of who strikes exactly at the life source just below the navel you are connected with your life with your mother from the navel just below the navel is the source of your own life just try when you say who who it hits below the navel who is the sufi discovery and whom is the tibetan way who seems to be a little harsh whom on the other hand seems to be somewhat softer but the softer will take longer time to wake up your energies it is possible that in particular climate of tibet the softer may be perfectly good they did not need such a harsh sound in order to hit the life source but in the harsh deserts of arabia sufi mystics had to use harder word who who is better than whom in the colder heights of tibet whom is perfectly right for whom is the hit to create om in you if you hit the seed of your life it starts disappearing in the soil and green leaves sprouts start to grow between the two words om and hum is mani padme in tibetan sutra i do not think anybody has been able to express the ultimate experience the ultimate beauty better than mani padme you have to visualize it the lotus flower in the east is most beautiful the mystical flower and if you put diamond on the lotus flower in the early morning sun you have a tremendously beautiful experience the lotus flower with diamonds it is very difficult to say anything about the ultimate experience however Tibetan mystics have tried the best. Many things have been said about it, but diamond in the lotus seems to be the best expression. It is the most beautiful experience, and they have chosen two most beautiful things of the ordinary world: the lotus and the diamond. It is just a visual ex- expression of beauty that you come to see within yourself. this mantra om mani padme hum has a whole philosophy within its womb we start with hum the last word and the first will arise on its own accord and when your inner being is filled with the sound of silence you will also have the beautiful experience of seeing a lotus with a diamond in the early morning sun 
the diamond is radiating the lotus is so soft so feminine and so delicate it has no comparison in any other flower it became so important to the mystics you have seen gautam buddha's statues sitting on the lotus they are showing symbolically that he has reached the ultimate his own inner lotus has flowered and not only the lotus has flowered the diamond hidden behind it inside it as it opens its petals you find kohinoor most precious diamond the diamond has a quality that is why it has been chosen it is symbolic of eternity the diamond is forever it knows no death it is immortal the experience is beautiful and eternal that is why the example of diamond is given but unfortunately tibet has fallen into darkness its monasteries have been closed its seekers of truth have been forced to work in labor camps the only country in the world which was working one point in genius all its intelligence in the search for the for man's own interiority and its treasures have been forced to stop by the communist invasion of tibet nowhere has such concentrated effort been made to discover man's being every family in tibet used to give their eldest son to some monastery where he was to meditate and grow closer to awakening it was a joy to every family that at least one of them was wholeheartedly 24 hours a day working on the inner being they were also working but they could not devote their entire time they had to create food and clothes and shelter and tibet it is difficult matter the climate is not very helpful to live in tibet is a tremendous struggle but is still every family used to give their first born child to the monastery there were 300 of monasteries none of these monasteries can be compared with any catholic monasteries these monasteries had no comparison in the whole world these monasteries were concerned only with one thing to make you aware of yourself thousands of devices have been created down the centuries so that your lotus can blossom and you can find your ultimate treasure the diamond these are just symbolic words however the destruction of tibet should be known in history particularly when man becomes a little more aware and humanity a little more humane meditation gives them a feeling of immortality hence their fear will disappear meditation not only gives them the experience of their own immortality instead it also gives them the experience that everybody is immortal death is fiction they will be living and you cannot kill them not even your nuclear weapons are going to kill them krishna in bhagavad gita has a beautiful sutra nainam chindanti shastrani nainam dahati pavaka na chainam kledayanta yapu na shushayati mar nainam chindanti shastrani nainam dahati pavaka no weapon can destroy no weapon can destroy neither me nor can any fire burn me yes indeed the body will be burned however i am not the body meditation gives you the, this feeling for the first time that you are not the body this is your authentic reality this is existence this is the pulse this is the this is om this is ek omkar this is existential oneness that nana calls ek omkar this alone is satnam ek omkar satnam 